So yeah, can you start the recording, Mark? Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, for today's agenda, uh, we already put some um, um, points on the, the Google Doc, and so yeah, the first the first one that we are going that I would like to highlight is um, we still have a bunch of ham charts v2 that we have to upgrade. Um, the biggest and the most annoying one is that we're still using uh, Nginx Ingress and in order to use the new um, chart location, apparently they suggest to add either delete the existing ham chart and to reinstall it um, or to deploy a second one next to the first one so we don't have any downtime for the application. Um, we are exploring the second option with Sladin. So I had him, uh, I had a call with him last week. So we opened a PR, and basically what we did is we tried to test his PR uh, together and see how he could improve it. Um, so it's still a work in progress, um, but yeah, I, I, I expect to finish this either this week or next week, and then so I would be able to to announce um, a maintenance window. But the, the, the target is to not have downtime anyway. Yeah, there's a deadline of November 11th on this, isn't there? Yeah, the, the, the deadline is coming pretty soon. Um, we migrated all the other ham charts. Um, the, the only one that we haven't migrated are DEX and OutProxy, and we don't need them anymore because those were used for the, um, for the, for the election last year, and we decided to not reuse them this year, so we just, I, I just have to remove them from the cluster. Um, the next point that I briefly mentioned, which is the Docker Hub issue, so the deadline is coming. Um, apparently, they announced that they will delay um, the policy, uh, the retention policy, for a few months. Um, but we are still looking for alternatives. I, ha I, I received no news from um, the Docker Hub, so we may um, go down the path about paying the subscription. Um, but yeah, otherwise nothing really major here. Um, the next topic is about Docker images for Windows. I think, yeah, Garrett, you have some news here that maybe you want to present or mention. Yeah, sure. So um, it's one of the kind of decisions that came out of last week was that we should be locking to the latest LTSC um, release for these. So rather than going with the 1809, 1909 uh, and so on releases, um, go with uh, 2019 LTSC. Um, so we have added kind of like a test phase into the Packer builds to validate that we can actually build um, Docker containers matching that version, um, which does seem to work nicely. Well, it works nicely for Azure. I am working on the AWS um, piece now. Um, and then it's a question of whether or not we need to build our own version of the adopt open JDK um, image or whether that PR will get merged on the adopt open JDK repo to actually um, produce 2019 uh, LTSC versions. Thanks. Just for the context, um, so basically the challenge that we are facing here is if you want to build a Windows Docker image, you need to use um, the, the Docker image version for Windows. You need to match the um, the host uh, machine. That's so, correct. Yeah. So we cannot. So that's that's the reason why we want to to, to select one specific version. So we don't maintain every Windows um, version. Um, that's why we decided to go with the LTSC 2019. Yeah, so even, even though the LTSC will be patched, um, it shouldn't update that version number. It should be the same version of the, the, the kernel, really. Um, so as long as Windows updates are applied um, to the base images, then that should be fine. Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, so what's, what's the current state to the specific tickets? So what are the next steps on that topic, basically, for you? Because the adopt of OpenJDK, uh, I saw a PR from, Slad and Slad, uh, from Alex on the adopt of the OpenJDK projects, but I don't have the feeling that, I mean, we are kind of blocked there. Um, we don't have any control on that project. 
So if we don't get any, um, I suppose, like, yeah, adoption on that, getting that one merged, we, I think the best option is for us to produce our own image based on that version. We've got a link to the PR. Yeah, um, that's that's something that I was. Yeah, I'll for. I'll add I'll add that in now. So the the create our own image and install adopt. Oh, good. You provided us a link. Excellent. Thanks, Jared. Great. I'm sorry about that. I have a good watchdog. <laughs> um, so yes, if you, if you could just put a link to the adapt open GPK PR, that would be awesome. Uh, and you did. That's really great. Um, and to the Jira ticket, that would be even better. Yep, I'll do that now. Um, next topic, um, any question on the, the Windows Docker image? No. So the next topic is about the artifactory. Um, as far as I know, there is no news there here. Uh, we are still, I, I think that the, the current state is, um, they are happy with the current situation. Yep, Mark, you have more information. Yeah, so so they were they were they've started a new set of monitoring based on the change that Daniel made. Okay. The change that Daniel made was to switch off the Allure use of our repository as a tool installer source. They've asked the second question oh, hey, what can we do to reduce the volume of data that you're currently storing? And the volume was like on the order of three terabytes. So three or four terabytes. So it's, it's a large, large repository. Daniel replied, yes, we know we need to do that. We have not done that yet. So we have an action yet to do, which is look at which are the things that are using the most space and identify if we can do something that does not jeopardize the project and still can reduce our space usage. Um, for instance, the incrementals is one place that we expect we'll find some savings we could make by just declaring a, a retirement policy for incremental builds that are you know more than a few months old yeah, something it like that it doesn't make sense to keep them forever anyway yeah so okay. the, let me make a note here that well So that, that's a further need. Um, so we're not done yet. And the action is on us, us right now, not on JFrog. OK, OK. Thanks. Um, next topic is about basically the um, JIRA testing that, that is happening this week. So yesterday, the Linux Foundation uh, gave us access to a public JIRA instance um, in order to do the test. It's almost the same, except that the endpoint is obviously different. Um, it's an old, I mean, it's, um, the, the data is something like two weeks old because of you, I mean, what, what we back up and restore that, 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 that data. We are still looking at um, any blocker uh, for the transition. As far as I'm aware of, we are tracking all the information in the Google Doc, but we haven't identified um, major issues. Um, do, you, do you want me to, to, to review them, Mark? The different issues um, that we noticed. I mean, those are actually, small. Yeah, those are small okay. issues. But I can just drag them in here, and we can look at them together briefly. We've got Tim here, and he were, he detected one that I had missed. Uh, so if it's okay, let's. Yeah, let's. Oh, good. So let's. Are you okay, Olivier? If I will just walk us through this. So Tim, yeah, I thought, I Tim, you found it, some right? things sure. that need updates, and that makes sense. 
Over so the th th those those update, um, those plugins were not available on the testing instance. So I'm just wondering where Tim found them. On that the is on, that is on the test well, the instance that we logged into that Linux Foundation URL. Okay, okay, because I I, lo I went to the same place and they were not listed. Hmm. So I was they were there when I posted the screenshot. I can see if they're still there. Okay. So yeah, that's what basically that, that those plugins. Um, in this case, we are using two plugins, Capture for Jira, which can be deleted. So we don't need them that anymore. I had got confirmation from um, Arnaud. And Suggestimates is, I think, still useful. Basically what it does is when you, when you create an issue, um, you try to detect if someone already created the same issue. Um, so it suggests other similar issues, which is useful um, yeah, from time to time. Um, we renew, so I think we just have to push the button update um, in this case. If you look at the, the, the widget, the dashboard, something that I found weird is indeed some, some, some gadget cannot be reused, like this one, this gadget cannot be displayed. But if you delete it, you can recreate it and it work uh, correctly. So I have no idea why this specific one is broken. Um, there are specific, I mean, there are a few gadgets broken on different dashboards, but again, I, I couldn't identify why. <coughs> it was working this way because I could just delete and recreate them. Um, if you go down again, because I listed a few things, if you go up um, in the comment that I did at the beginning. Oh, of this yes. Document, it looks like I cleared that comment. Can someone more actually? No, no, it go, if you go up, if, if you go up on the document, if you go up again, 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 before Tim Jack, yeah, just go down testing notes. Oh. See, test, all black. I put a Got bunch it. of comments. Um, so the different thing that I identify that I'm wondering is what about the way we send emails? So right now we are using SendGrid to send the emails. Um, it is working correctly. But if we switch to the Linux Foundation, we may have to, to use something else. Uh, something important to understand is we enable DMARC on our domain. So if we want to change the, the, the I mean, if we want to allow the Linux Foundation to send emails, then we also have to update the DNS. So that's something to keep in mind. So it's not as, as easy. Otherwise, we don't send a lot of emails. So the, the basic secret account that we have is way enough, but yeah. Um, the second point that I couldn't verify is I shared some credentials with uh, Linux Foundation. So they could create a less encrypt certificate using the DNS method, and they should only have access to specific text records. Um, I'm still wondering if it's working for them because in this case, we are not using issues that you can see at .org. Um, so this is something that I would like to validate. And finally, something that I also, I think we should change is by default in the, in the current settings, we use Jenkins, uh, Jenkins .org domain and the default one is Jenkins.io. So we should also, yes. I thought, I thought that this one was the broken one Yes, and it's a broken one because um, you have to configure that inside uh, Jira. So um, oh. at the moment, we have two um, HTTP proxy in front of it, issues uh, Jenkins.io and Jenkins.org. But the Jenkins.org is a deprecated domain. So now the default one is Jenkins.io and we keep Jenkins.org for backward compatibility. So ideally, we should switch to Jenkins.io. And basically what happened is, um, sorry, years ago, someone made a contribution to the project to enable Jenkins that are your domain in front of Jira, but it never really worked. And so that's why when you go to issues that Jenkins are your, there are some broken links and stuff like that because Jira doesn't like you to use different domain than the one configured internally. So, so that's the, the issues that Jenkins that, oops, issues that Jenkins that IO domain it's a single global configuration change that we make on Jira and it should then work as expected? Yes, so basically if you go to the Jira configuration, you can specify the domain that you want to use. And you have also to put, I mean, if you have an HTTP proxy in front of it, your HTTP proxy need to accept that domain. So that, 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 that's just that. And the thing is we never, we never really update the Jira configuration. Okay, um, so. So then this one is one we would need them to 
to agree that they will change the default domain or is that something that's in our control? We could change it after the migration is complete. So the, in our case, the thing is I have, that's what, the reason why I never changed that is because um, the domain is hard coded in the Tomcat configuration in our case. It's defined in the Jira database and we have an HTTP proxy. So the reason why we never really officially switched to issues of Jenkins that is because we never took the time to clean up that and to be sure that um, it's working as expected. Okay, so so this really is something where we can coordinate it with Anton yep. and make that change, but we really can't prove it works until final final transition the week of November yep. nine. Yep. But yeah, in this case, in in this case, because they provided a different um, URL uh, because it's a Linux Foundation endpoint. Um, then they can just put whatever they want there. Okay. And otherwise, I just quickly documented the different ways that I test the new instance. I haven't identified any major blocker here. So to me, I think we should uh, plan for the next step. Great. Excellent. Oh, and I need to include a link to that Google Doc. That Google Doc is intentionally not publicly visit, public readable because I thought if we someone, one of us is testing needed to say something in there that was not uh, for public consumption. So if you're not a member, not on that doc and you wanna see it, just click to ask for permissions. Uh, so basically that's the way we work when we don't want to be public, for, I mean, for obvious reason, then we usually ask the person to manifest his interest and then we, we just share access. So we don't want to be private, it's just that we want to know who has access to the information, basically. Great. So the and next so step, yep. Before we, before we leave that topic, everyone's still okay with the week of November 9th as the transition week for final transition? I assume we continue testing for a few more days here, hoping not to find a blocker. If we don't find a blocker, we go with November 9. Is that okay? To me, that's perfect because sooner is better with Jira anyway. Um, this basically gives us the next week um, to react to whatever happened, and then we can plan um, a downtime. We still have to look with the Linux Foundation how much time it will take to back up the current Jira, the, the current Jira instance and restore the backup because basically we must be sure that nobody updates uh, the production Jira instance while we are backupping and restoring. So the Jira instance will probably be done for a few days, a few hours, sorry. Right, yeah, at least a few hours. At least a few hours, um, so yeah we try to communicate about what will be done next week once we synchronize with the Linux Foundation. Great. The next topic is about Azure Credit. So the first thing that we have to, um, we, we are still getting warning that the bill hasn't been paid. Um, we, I'm still waiting for, for news from the Linux Foundation, um, but yeah, that's the current state. Otherwise, if I understand correctly, you were able to to introduce a request to get credit from Microsoft, Mark? Last week. Yeah, well, Kayla Linville, our customer success manager at Microsoft, uh, has submitted a request to her management asking that we be granted credit, uh, credits. And I don't know if they will say yes, say no, say some. I assumed any credit that Microsoft's willing to give us will help offset the cost that CDF is currently paying for our Azure resources. So I thought if, if they say yes to anything, it's a win. Yep, that would be really awesome because yeah, we are not moving away from Azure anyway. Um, any other topic that you want to highlight? And for me. Because then I think we can close the meeting earlier doesn't make sense to keep it for 30 minutes if we don't have any more things to say. So thanks for your time and see you on RC. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yep.